Uh, thank you. CARES stands for Cardiorenal Rescue Study in Acute Decompensated Heart Failure. And this was a uh, project sponsored by the NHLBI and performed by the Heart Failure Clinical Research Network. Uh, the reason we became interested in this project is that um, uh, relief of congestion is perhaps the primary treatment goal in uh, patients hospitalized with acute decompensated heart failure. It's the main reason why they come to the hospital. And while we're treating these patients acutely, up to a third of them develop uh, acute cardiorenal syndrome, which is a worsening of the creatinine uh, during acute therapies. We felt that venovenous ultrafiltration is a potential therapy in this setting, but uh, there are no clear data uh, helping us out in terms of the safety and efficacy of ultrafiltration compared to standard therapies in acute decompensated heart failure complicated by acute cardiorenal syndrome and persistent congestion. Therefore, uh, our hypothesis was that ultrafiltration compared to stepped pharmacologic care in these patients would lead to improved kidney function and improved uh, decongestion. Um, kidney function measured by change in creatinine and decongestion uh, measured by change in weight. This is a flow sheet of the study. Uh, patients uh, who were hospitalized with decompensated heart failure who met all entry criteria were randomized to one of two treatment strategies, uh, pharmacologic care or ultrafiltration. In both groups, patients were treated until their volume status was optimized. That is, until the treating physicians felt like uh, they were ready to be transitioned to oral diuretics in anticipation of hospital discharge. The primary endpoint, which I'll discuss shortly, was measured at 96 hours, and outcomes for safety uh, were measured out to 60 days. These are the inclusion-exclusion criteria. These were adults admitted with a primary diagnosis of acute decompensated heart failure. They all had to have worsening renal function, and we defined that as an increase in creatinine of at least 0.3 milligrams per deciliter. And they all had to show evidence of ongoing congestion. We excluded patients who had a creatinine of 3.5 or an obvious indication for dialysis. Uh, we excluded patients who had an alternate um, explanation for their worsening renal function, blood pressure less than 90, uh, and you can read the rest of the slide here. This was a study of stable heart failure patients. Anyone who needed uh, IV vasoactive therapies were excluded. Patients randomized to ultrafiltration were, uh, had their volume status managed exclusively by the uh, uh, Aquadex System 100 ultrafiltration device according to um, the manufacturer's specifications. This is slow, continuous ultrafiltration that was performed after uh, obtaining IV access. Uh, all patients were heparinized, and the initial rate of ultrafiltration was 200 milliliters per hour to be continued until the patient's volume status was optimized. The use of IV inotropes or vasodilators, uh, or the addition of these agents, was prohibited except in the case of treatment failure. The comparator group was not just usual care, it was a uh, stepped pharmacologic care algorithm that was designed by the heart failure network with specific recommendations about the doses and delivery of IV diuretics um, in order to achieve three to five liters of urine output per day. After the first two days, if urine output was inadequate, uh, investigators were encouraged to consider the addition of uh, inotropes or vasodilators. And after 72 hours, if the urine output was still inadequate, investigators could consider uh, hemodynamically guided IV therapies, crossover to ultrafiltration, or dialysis. Our primary endpoint uh, was change in serum creatinine and change in weight between randomization and 96 hours, considered as a bivariate response, and I'll go into details a little later on that. Uh, the analysis was intentioned to treat and standard statistical methods were used. Here are some of the baseline features. We enrolled 188 patients, 94 in each treatment group, average age of about 68, mostly male, mostly white, with a median ejection fraction of 33%. Um, 
the rest of the profile is fairly typical for heart failure patients, although I would uh, specifically mention a very high incidence of diabetes and hypertension, not surprising in these patients who developed worsening renal function. The average creatinine at the time of enrollment was uh, 2, and the qualifying increase in creatinine in order to get into the study was about 0.45, no difference between the two groups. This is a complicated slide, and uh, it is the primary endpoint. And uh, what you see here uh, on this grid is change in creatinine on the vertical axis and change in weight on the horizontal axis. Increases in creatinine are shown above, and decreases in creatinine are shown below. On the horizontal axis, increases in weight are shown to the right and decreases in weight are shown to the left. The blue star indicates the 96-hour uh, change in creatinine and change in weight for the pharmacologic care group. And you can see the star represents the mean change and the ellipse represents a 95% confidence region around the mean. So in the pharmacologic care group, patients lost about 12 pounds with very little change in creatinine. The ultrafiltration patients shown in red show a um, similar degree of weight loss, about 12 pounds. But at the 96-hour endpoint, there was an increase in creatinine that was significant with a uh, p-value of 0 0.003 for this bivariate endpoint. This is specifically looking at change in weight at different time points, and you can see highlighted in green that there was really no difference in weight at all at the 96-hour endpoint between the two treatment strategies. Prior to the 96-hour endpoint, there was a slight tendency for increased weight loss in the uh, ultrafiltration group. This is looking at change in creatinine at the different time points. And uh, at 24 hours, both groups had a slight decrease in creatinine. But by 48 hours and on to 72 and 96 hours, there was a significant increase in creatinine in the ultrafiltration group uh, that was no longer significant by seven days. In both treatment groups, the creatinine decreased below baseline at 30 days and at 60 days but the lesser decrease in creatinine in the ultrafiltration group was significant at 60 days. Looking at 60-day event rates, on the um, left we see the combination of death or heart failure rehospitalization that approached 40% at 60 days with no significant difference between the two groups. And on the right you see a combination of death or serious adverse event uh, and there was a significant difference with more serious adverse events occurring in the ultrafiltration group. So in conclusion, uh, we found that pharmacologic care was superior to ultrafiltration at 96 hours for preservation of renal function with similar weight loss. That uh, ultrafiltration, at least as administered in this study, had higher rates of adverse events and therefore offers no advantage over stepped pharmacologic care in patients with acute decompensated heart failure, worsened renal function, and persistent congestion. This is a challenging group of patients to treat. The 60-day event rates are very high and better therapies are needed uh, in the future. Um, this was conducted by the heart failure network uh, with the primary sites shown on this slide, and there will be an uh, online uh, simultaneous publication in the New England Journal of Medicine. Thank you.